music very important very very important the music but hold on let me just check my audio really quick yeah that sounds good okay so let's put the music oh wait what can you still hear me yeah okay Hello, hello. Um, what should I put? What about this? Oh, there you go. Hey, Niket. Nice to see you here. Hi, Munaf. Hello, 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 everyone. All right, looks like we are here. Hi from Twitch. Nice to see you. All right, sweet. Um, so you might have seen the title. What's new in any point code builder with Alex? It's me, Alex. <laughs> um, and we have Freud today. Sweet. Hey, Francis. How are you? All right. So, hello, hello. I also moved my setup. I hope you like it. I have like some, how do you call that? Easter eggs like in the background. Yeah, I hope you find them. If not, that's fine. Um, hello. So, all right. We are going to be looking into what's new in Any Point Code Builder. In case you are totally new to Any Point Code Builder, this is the brand new IDE that Mulesop has been preparing for you all. It's not done yet. So if you've been trying it out and you're like, oh, there are a ton of features that are missing. Yes, because this is a beta version. So it's just for you to kind of get your feet into what is this going to become in the future. It's not ready yet. You should not use it for a production environment. It's just for experimenting and trying out something new, trying out what is the future going to look like but it's still a beta version as i just said so just be careful with it it's just to try it out just to have a little bit of fun it's not to start developing right away you should still use uh, any point studio for your day-to-day because -day, um, any point cool builder is not done yet so all right let's get into it then um let me present my screen share screen <clears throat> and so if you are totally new to this, the first thing you have to do is to create, well, you can create a free trial account at anypoint.mulesup.com there. Um, and once you create the free trial account, which is, for example, I just created this free trial account today, like right before the stream. So everything you are about to see right now is from a brand new trial account in case you want to try it out. So create a free trial account there. And then once you are in, you can just go here and go to Code Builder Beta. Oh, I don't have my key caster. I always forget about that. Okay, there you go. So now, once you're here, um, it's going to ask you first a ton of things like that you have to agree, legal things, just select yes. And then um, here you can just launch a new web IDE. As you can see here, there is a Code Builder desktop option, which is coming soon. It's not done yet. But th yes, this, like if you are using Visual Studio Code right now, then the only thing you would need to do is to install the AnyPoint Code Builder extensions on your local Visual Studio Code. And that's it. I think I have, yeah, I have a studio here. Uh, sorry, a Visual VS, VS Code <laughs> here. 
So you would just have to go to the extensions, install it, and bam, you will have this running. So yeah, that is coming. It's not yet done, but it will be there eventually. So we can just launch the web IDE for now. And this is going to take a few minutes. I already did this, so you can just like follow up with what I'm doing and you don't have to wait for me. Uh, so you can just launch it and then you will see something like this. Welcome to any point called builder. Let me make this bigger. There you go. Um, this is going to be the welcome. Here you can find some tutorials, designing an API, implementing an API, developing an integration. But that's fine because we kind of already did all of those things in previous streams. So if you are new to this whole thing, you can go to twitch.tv <laughs> slash millsoft underscore community to find all of our previous streams. And just like check out what everyone else has been doing. I'm going to change the background music. Hold on. No. I don't know what I want. Okay. And there you will be able to see all of the previous recordings. So you can see how each one of these people from the community um, have been trying out a point called Builder. This is the newest version though. Um, no one has seen this version before on the streams. So uh, something might not be exactly the same in the UI, but that's fine. So choose the color you want, the very first thing you get to do. And you can also install themes, which is what I did the previous time. Um, it was Winter is Coming. I really liked that one. So I'm going to install it real quick. Install. Sweet. There. I really like this theme. I don't know why, but there we go. So I have that. Um, and then what I also did last time was to open here a project that was already working. Uh, let me go to my GitHub. I think I opened the Battlesnake one. So let me open that code, uh, clone, yeah. Um, so here. Uh, how did I do this? Was it in the terminal? Yeah, right. I did this in the terminal. So where, where is the terminal here? Yes. I hope you all can see. Let me know if you can't see something. I can still zoom in more. So I am in the terminal. Oh, wait, am I already signed in? Cause I remember that was a thing that you had to manually sign in before. Where can I see? Oh no, not logged in. Okay, never mind. I'm not signed in. That that still has to happen. All right, so I was going to do git clone this thing. Um allow yes. Okay, it's cloned. It's there. So if I do ls L S L A or just L S, I guess. I can see my mule battlesnake. So now I can open folder and say mule battlesnake. Uh, just mule battlesnake. Yeah. Do you trust the authors of the files in this folder? Yes, I trust them with my life because it's me. So I trust myself with my life. I guess. I would hope so. All right, so I'm here. Um, this is my source main mule, Battlesnake API. Okay, I'm going to zoom out a little bit. So this is loading the canvas. And we already have here all of the XML code. So let's just wait for the canvas to load so we can see how it looks like very different from studio again if you're new to checking this out in studio you normally have like a horizontal view right you keep adding um components to your flow in a horizontal manner and here in any point code builder as you can see there in the preview 
it's going to be vertical. So you will keep adding stuff vertically instead of horizontally, which I think is pretty clever because now, since this is horizontal, you now have this other view that you can keep here. So you can see your XML at the same time as you can see your visual representation in the canvas. So I think that's pretty cool. Did I just spill that? Am I a baby? <laughs> Good thing that I have napkins or toilet paper, whatever it is. I don't know why this is taking so long. It normally doesn't take that long. Maybe it's because I have something more complex. Should I restart? Hmm. I'm just going to refresh to see if that works. It doesn't normally take that long. It takes like maybe five seconds. Like it does take a little bit, like it takes some seconds, but not like full a full minute. Well, while that happens, let's check what is new with this new version. Yeah. So there is a new business group support. Um, so I guess this was not working before. It works now. Search filters when implementing an API. Code Builder introduces filters to refine your search results when looking for an API asset from Exchange to implement and improved Canvas UI. Uh, Code Builder improves the email application design process, enabling you to add components to your flow from the canvas. Well, that is exciting if I can see it in a little bit. Again, this is on a beta version, so it is not working properly yet. That's what all beta versions do. Like, it's gonna take a while to get to the point where we want to be. But we can see kind of a preview of how this is going to be working eventually. I don't know why this is taking so long. What if I just create a new file? Test.xml. Okay. So if I create a new one, I can see this right away. So, okay. Let's just do that because I don't know why it's taking so long to load the other one. That's fine. So this was not there before. This is cool. Um, so flow list. Okay. There is no flow in the current file. And then if I click on add, there's an internal <laughs> error. That's totally fine. What if I click on plus and internal error? Okay, cool. Uh, let's select then create new. Oh, that is the internal error. Okay. Um, should I be doing this any other way? Let's remove this. Uh, delete. Delete. So nothing should happen here because these are just global. But it is trying to load it. So, um, And this is still not working. So let me copy this whole thing. Let me create a new file, test it there. And then uh, the, oh, so just mule, no, just mule, okay. So after that, just mule, that's it. So let's see if that works. Let me close now. Ah! Let me close everything. Then open test. Oh, I didn't put XML. Oops. Um, rename test.xml. There we go. Okay. So now I open it and the canvas is there. Okay. It still shows the internal error. Hmm. 
Okay, what if I manually create the flow, though? Wasn't there a way, no, to show me the options? Uh, no. Okay. Ah! Okay, let me flow name and then just flow, right? Okay. So flow name test flow. Okay. Does that work? Or let me just open it again. So have you tried this before? Have you tried the new version? I am also going to try to go through a tutorial because um, maybe this project that I'm using is way too much um, for this. Yeah, this is, I don't think this is going to work. Okay. You know what? Let's just start with a new project. Um, how do I... Okay, I'm going to open this thing again. Refresh, launch. Oh, it's still there. <laughs> okay. Uh, how can I just do like open new window? Yeah, file. Uh, ah! New window. Okay, there you go. So, okay, now let's follow the tutorial because, like, this is not working. Um, get started with VS Code in the web. Learn the fundamentals. Boost your productivity. Recent. Where are the tutorials? Okay, there you go. Getting started. Design an API. Implement an API. Develop an integration. Let's do develop an integration. Uh, project name test one two three because I have no creativity create project. I trust with my life. Okay. Ah, okay. So we have source main mule test one two three. Let's open this. And again, this is on a beta, so it's going to be flawed. What is this? Deploy. Oh, deploy to Cloud Hub. Show Mule graphical mode. Split editor. Come on, you can do it. You can do it. I trust in you. Oh, also the M units were not working the last time that I tried it. It was just not showing anything. Okay, so... Okay, it works now. Maybe I was missing some... Uh, how do you call this? Like, namespaces. Maybe that was a thing. Maybe that's why it wasn't working. All right. So let's add a flow. Yeah, let's add a flow. Um... Oh, I have the error handler there. Okay, so I'm very zoomed in. This is a normal zoom that you would see. Um, I'm gonna zoom in again, but just so you can see, like, this is how it would look like in a normal computer that is not zoomed in. Like, you have the projects here, you have the whole canvas. Here are the flows, here are the error handlers. Like, everything is there. You will be able to see it all. And you can always, like, move this around to whatever you need. So there's that. Now I'm going to zoom in again so you can all see what I'm doing. But remember, like that is there. I can also put this here. So just for the time being, I'm going to put this in different tabs so you can see the whole canvas um, on its entirety. 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 
whatever. You can also move this around like this, so. Oh, can you move? No, you can't, okay. Well, you can do that, that's cool. All right, so we have here the flow. Let's create an HTTP. So if I click here, oh, this is so exciting. Okay, we have core processors, connectors. What is core processors? Okay, batch, components, error handling, wait. Wait a second. There, so you can see everything. Batch, components, error handling, flow control, scopes, transformers, and triggers. Wait, no, I'm gonna put myself here. There you go. So all of those things, or actually, sorry, I keep changing this thing. Can I just, yeah. Um, okay. Sweet, I can move around now. <laughs> um, anyway, here are the core, core processors. And now let's see the connectors. Okay, so these are basically the things that you install and the core processors are the core processors. <laughs> so let's add an HTTP then. This should be in connectors, HTTP listener. Okay, it was added successfully. Oh my god. So this is how the future is going to look like. Of course, this is still flawed. Again, this is a beta version. It doesn't work in its entirety yet. Such a nice tea. Hi, Felix. Oh, I cannot see myself. <laughs> Then that's why I had put my, myself in the other way. Doesn't matter, it's fine. Just for the time being that I'm adding stuff. Okay, so we have the listener and now let's create a set payload like the normal things that we would do. Error handling, flow control transformers. Yeah, set payload. Oh wait, and then how do I uh okay i can't modify this from this view yet or maybe it's because i have the xml here hold on let me put it here again okay so if i click here okay it selects the site payload and if i click here it selects the http listener all right so path um for now um i'm just gonna use this thing and you know what let me put this down so we can make this bigger sweet all right so this listener path is going to be slash test oh config ref i don't have it listener doc id okay so i need the config ref how can I create that? Do I have to do this manually? I have no idea. We'll see. We'll see in a moment. And then we have the site payload. Um, and the value is going to be... Uh, testing, testing. One, two, three, testing. Like a mic, 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 test. And let's do a logger now. Um, car processors, where is the logger? Oh, I can also search for it. Logger, there you go. Logger. And uh, why can I not modify? The value. Okay, let's leave it like that. Sweet, we have a flow. But now, how do I put the config ref? Nope. Um, is there something in the palette? Add... Um, global? No. Global? No. Um... What about config? No. Config. No. Mule. 
Deploy, design, develop, export, ah, export, implement, import a new project, import a project, and uh, build application, refresh, refresh, show, show. Okay. Uh, any point called builder, focus, login, show. Okay. So I will have to do this manually then, I guess. Um, how, <laughs> how did that work? I have not worked with the XML view in so long. Let me just see whatever I have here. So this is the global um, HTTP listener config. Uh, connection. Okay, this is the config. And I'm just going to put this here. I'm not going to create a new file for now. Name, um, just HTTP listener config. And then I can just put this here. No, no. Oh, that's a flow. Whoops, sorry. Flow name test config there. Okay, that worked, right? Uh, so if I go to here, uh, listener config, yeah, yeah, that's fine. Okay. All right, so I have the config now. Why is this not indentated properly? Oh my God, no, like this. It drives me insane when that happens, sorry, okay. Oh, I can also do this, right? What was it? Manic told me. Format. Oh, I can't. I can't do it now. Okay, here. Format. Format document. Sweet. I like that. Okay. So, this is done then. How was it that I tested it? This is deploy. Okay, let's get the thing. Um, run. Run and debug. Run build. Wasn't there an easier way? No? Oh, there, here. Okay. So as long as I don't have any breakpoints, I am not debugging. Let's just run this. Here we can see the output. And I think I can go back to this side now. Your application running on port 6666 is available. Okay. Um... So, can I just call this from my browser? I remember last time I wasn't able to do that. Eighty eighty one. Uh, go. Oh, okay, this is not working. I, I'm, I'm gonna do this locally. I just wanted to see opening browser, okay. Test. Oh my God. Okay, it's working now. So the URL, ah, oh, I can just do that. Okay, the URL was pheasant and loser's lead builder code com proxy 881 test. Because my my thing, if you see here, is pheasant builder com builder code com. So this is my instance of any point code builder in the cloud. Um, so it's basically the same URL, just proxy 881 test. And it's working. Last time I wasn't able to make it work 
from my browser. I had to do it like from here. Well, that is exciting. So if I do here inside, if I do curl localhost 8081 test, it's working. Okay. Yeah, I can see here. Testing, testing, one, two, three. Okay. So it is working. Clear. Yeah. So it is working from terminal if I do localhost, and it is working from the browser if I do pheasant glit. <laughs> so that is how it works. Okay. I uh, that is cool. So last time I tried it, I was trying to run my Battlesnake from here and then call, just call the URL from Battlesnake. And I wasn't able to do that. But there's an easier way now. It's just showing it to me in ports. I don't know if this was working before or not, but it's pretty neat that I can just do that now. What's this? Copy local address. Oh, okay. So this is copy. This is open in browser and this is preview in editor. That's sweet. And you can see here all of the ports that it's using. I, again, I don't know if this was working before, but that's cool. All right. So, and then what happens if I do some change? uh let's remove this testing well testing testing one two three and then let's just put uh two new lines and i guess it's saved automatically but then i think i have to restart this right like it's not gonna restart automatically yeah um what's this restart okay if i click on restart Will that be good enough? Okay, finished. Oh, no, no, it didn't finish. It finished now. Uh, no. <laughs> okay. Oh, it's restarting the ports. I have 666. I'm missing uh, 8081. So I guess it's still doing that. Yeah, there it is. Okay. 8081. There you go. Oh, I didn't do the change though. I removed the testing. Okay. So I have to stop. And then run it again. I like this setting way more, like my microphone is away from me. I basically put another table next to my desktop cause in my desk, like I have, I don't know if you can see, this is where my desk ends. So I had to put my microphone around this. So every time that I put it there, like it would be so close to me that I wasn't able to move my left arm because it would always like get in the way of the microphone but now i put another table next to my desk and now my microphone is here you cannot you cannot even see it on the screen like it's out of the screen so now my microphone arm is able to get here and not get in the way of my left arm which is Cool, like it's just those little things that make your life easier. Okay, this is deployed, port is done. So now if I do this again, okay, now I can see this thing. And if I do curl here, well, it's not, <laughs> it's not doing the new line, uh, but you can see that it's there. Okay, good enough. So if you have a change, you have to stop and restart but it doesn't take as long as Aimpoint Studio would normally do. Are there any questions so far?
you can ask any questions. We still have like 25 minutes, but let me know if there are any questions. All right, so that's basically what's new. That's the most important thing, in my opinion, the improved canvas, because yeah, those are cool, but like not that cool as the canvas thing. So I'm pretty excited about that. What else can we add? Let's do error handlers. So let's try to, let's stop this thing first. Are you... Yeah, okay. Um, I could also try adding properties, but I feel that's not as exciting. Mm. I'm also not logged in yet. I feel like that's still something that should happen. Like you should automatically be logged in. If you're launching this from any point platform anyway, like from here, then like you should take your credentials and make it available for you already from any point code builder. Uh, I already sent this feedback to product and I believe they're working on it. It's just not there yet. This is a beta version, <laughs> so it's not going to be perfect. Um, all right, so we have that. What else should we do? Let me move sides again so you can see here. Oh, there's a question. Okay. Is there a way to add global configurations using UI instead of writing complete XML? I feel like not yet. It will be there when it's ready, of course. But I, I, I think it's not there yet. Not right now. Because if I click on add, I can only see flow, subflow, on error, continue, on error, propagate, and error handler. I cannot add the global properties yet from here. But I am assuming this is where it's going to be. Like when you click on add, you will be able to see here the global properties or whatever else you want to add. And you will be able to add them there. That is my assumption. I'm not sure. I'm not from product. I'm not talking on behalf of product. I am not sure what is the future going to look like, but that is what I'm assuming is going to happen. You will be able to add them somewhere and you will be able to use the UI instead of having to write it. But right now, since they are just releasing small features one at a time, and this is a big feature, like the UI change is a big, big feature. Um, it's limited. Of course, it's a beta version, but it will be there eventually. So, Pranav, to answer your question, I think not right now, but it will be there at some point. Because eventually it will have all of the same functionality that you can do in Studio, just in this new format, basically. So... Let's do, what What should we do? Okay, let's create a new global, new file, global XML. And let's move that thing over. Um, okay, so this is the global thing. Should I? I'm just gonna copy the whole thing and then remove the flow. Ah, no, what did I do? Remove the flow there. And then here, I'm going to remove this thing. What are you doing? There, okay. All right, so I think it's working because it's not sending me any errors. Test connection. Can I test the connection? Verifying connection. Maybe I can start doing some small changes to see if all of them are working. Connection is valid. Cool. All right. Um, so let's run this. Uh, can I do this with 
with the palette, run, run and debug. Uh, I don't want the focus on anything. I just want to run it. Debug mule application. Okay, what about debug mule? Nope. Okay. Just do it. I'm just gonna check again that is it's still working even with this global change. So we have to wait until the 8081 port is added here, and then we can test it from the browser or the terminal, whatever you prefer to do. There we go, 8081. So this should still work, yeah, okay. So yes, we can do the thing. And now stop. Okay, I wonder if all of these things have to be there. What's this? Namespace is never used. Oh, uh, okay, so all of the other ones are used then. I guess. So if I were to remove all of these namespaces, I guess I would start seeing some errors. And here. Yeah. Okay. So we do need the namespaces. Good to know. And I can format document. It's done. All right. So let's do properties now. So, okay, we have the host and the port. Let's do some new file. Um, Default.yaml. See if that works. And then we will have HTTP. Um, host. We had zero, 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 and port 8081. And we will have to add the property configuration, right? <clears throat> Let me go to my global, just so I can see what was here. Yeah, configuration properties, file. I'm going to, I'm not going to use the environment one. Uh, here, configuration properties, doc name, configuration properties. Wait, can I just use name? I don't know. There's no doc ID here. Maybe I don't need this. I don't know. And then file. And this is going to be default .jaml. for my document. Okay, all good. Huh. Why is this name and this is doc name? All right, I'm not gonna question it. So we have the properties set. Now let's see if they work. And this is going to be Ah, HTTP dot host, <clears throat> and this is going to be HTTP dot port. All right, let's see if that works. And also, let me change the payload to just one, two, three, because it's annoying. Okay, now let's run this. Okay. 
6666 is available. We're just waiting so this is done. And 9999. I need 8081. Oh, it failed. Oh, shoot. Um, YAML configuration properties only supports string values. Make sure to grab the value with... Oh, okay. Got it. So stop. And default, okay, so this has to be a string because this is a number. And I guess this one is fine. Okay, let's try that again. And for everyone watching, oh no, <laughs> my face there. Remember to go to twitch.tv. I can't. I can't do this. Okay. <laughs> twitch.tv slash Microsoft underscore community to follow us. You will be able to see all of our previous recordings, all of uh, the upcoming streams. You can see the schedule of the upcoming streams so you never miss what we are going to do. Um, and you can receive notifications as soon as we come live so you never miss us. You can download the app to your phone and you will receive a notification to your phone when we come live. Okay, this is deployed. Cool. So follow us. And also uh, remember to go to the LinkedIn MuleSoft community or Twitter at MuleDev, whatever you prefer to do. Or just Twitch, because I'm here. Sweet. Is it 8081? Yeah, okay. Okay. So this is working now. Sweet. So that wasn't too bad. <coughs> uh, I'm having uh, <coughs> um, forgot the name. Throat, 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 throat aches because I decided to go on a rave on Saturday. And guys, don't do that if you're almost thirty years old. That's just not. Like, I've been hangover for four, three, for three days, and I didn't even drink alcohol. What is that? Anyway, <clears throat> that's why I'm coughing right now. <laughs> so this is working. We have properties. We have a global. What else should we do? We could also do the environment properties, but I don't want to. We have 10 minutes. What else would you like me to try? Um, what else can we add here? Logger. Mm, wait, let me stop this. We could also send some query parameters. Yeah, let's try um, transformers. Oh. There's no transform message. Transform. Ah, there is. What if I want to move it? Oh, I can't move it. Okay. I have to do it from here. Uh, transform. So this, I'm going to take it. And I'm going to put it before set payload. I'm going to remove the set payload. Okay. Oh, I, I can also change the names. Uh, doc name, doc ID, or can I? Yeah, I can. Okay. DW log in the listener. Oh, that's a difference. Oh, no, it's not. Well, I don't know what the difference is. Anyway, race error. Ooh, yes. Let's raise an error. Um, test. Let's raise an error. Let's do that. So, and now how do I? 
I can't. <laughs> so the transform is just there, but I can't actually modify it. I will have to copy things. Uh, nope. Can I just raise an error here? Yeah. Let's just do that instead. And let's remove this thing. Can I just remove it? Yes. Okay. And format document. Okay. So race error type. Uh, what type? Uh, dogs, mule soft, error types, mm, mule errors, mule error types, uh, not found, I guess, transformation, let's do, let's do transformation, I hope it accepts it, where is it, there, transformation, okay race error and then let's do the error handling especially for log oh just found control space works especially for logger control control space for what logger uh well it's just showing the spotlight for me nope No, it's not working for me. Maybe it's for <coughs> Windows only? I don't know. What is this? Oh, language. All right. So we have the transformation and let's add here the error handler. An error continue. Yeah, let's do error continue. Uh, name, dog name, owner, continue. Okay. And then set payload. Oh my God, I'm hating the formatting. Value there was an error click inside the xml do control space it shows the message attribute oh okay let me see so like here oh, okay no suggestions what if i put it here property name okay oh okay 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 Okay, thank you, Pranav. That's super helpful. I knew there was a way, or I thought there was a way, because I remember kind of seeing that in one of the streams. I just forgot what that was doing. Okay, we have the set payload. There was an error. Let's try it out. Running, that's it, right? Yeah, running debug. Oh, well, I don't have the name here. I hope it lets me do it without the name. We'll see. Failed. Yeah, I, I might need the name. Uh, it's not a valid. Line 10. Yeah, I'm missing the name. <laughs> okay. Um, so what name? Uh, continue? Or should it be this name? I'm just gonna copy and paste the same name because I don't know what has to be here. Uh, 
And also, can I just, can I put the type? Yeah, type transformation. Okay, sweet. Okay, that works. Let's try it again. We still have four minutes left. If you want me to try something else, I can just try it. 6666 is available. Failed. What now? The value on error continue of attribute name of element is not valid with respect to its type. Substitutable. Then what is the name that you want me to put? Like, just tell me. Um, and then if I did this, it just showed me property name. What if I put on error continue? Will that work for you? Six 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 is available. Come on, we are so close, so close, and so far away. Deployed. Okay, and also the flow list. Oh, you can see the different flows. Awesome. Okay, eight eighty one running. There was an error. Yay! It worked. So, okay, I have like two minutes left, but one, this name should come, like if it already knows what name exactly it needs, then just put it there. <laughs> this is a beta. This is a beta. So let's do an error propagate. If it's any other type that is not um, that thing, Let's put here on error propagate. Then I want you to just send the error. Let's do another set payload. And format. Oh, I can't. It's here. Format. Set payload. Uh, here, this one, right? Error. Okay. Stop. Oh, shoot. No, wait. On error continue, there was an error. Okay. On error propagate. Error. Okay. This is okay. This is okay. This is okay. <clears throat> and now I'm going to change the transform message. I'm going to put a transform message. Whoops. Or an if. Maybe an if. A choice. Choice. Let's do a choice. Just to see how that looks like. Um, so where's the choice? Here. Dog name choice. Dog ID. When. Uh. How do I put the choice? When? No. <clears throat> Is it inside? When? When expression true 
and let's send a query parameter. What was the thing to get a query parameter? Uh, data wave query parameters. Yes, yes. Thank you, Jordan. <clears throat> um, there you go. Attributes dot that's headers. No, not headers. There attributes dot query params. Okay. Uh, I know I'm a time you can leave if you want, but I kind of want to finish this to make sure that it works. So this is uh, this I believe. Um, attributes dot query params dot is to err able to resolve reference of attributes why not quick fix create variable no i wonder if it's gonna let me do it anyway attributes dot query params dot name yeah it should work like that let's just leave it and see if it works well, when that happens, uh, oh, shoot, sorry. Attributes error equals uh, trans for trans for, uh, let's just do DW. If this is DW, then I'm gonna send the error that I already had here. Can I just, no, I can't move it. Let's take this, and then the, this goes inside the one, I guess. Yeah, okay, sweet. So if that happens, we have the race error. Otherwise, just do a logger, whatever. Ah, log. Oh no, otherwise I wanted to raise the other error. Yes, race error. And this type, I don't care, can be anything else. Oh no. Uh, why are you not telling me what to put now? Type. You were giving me suggestions earlier. Okay, let's do... What security timeout? Let's do timeout. Type timeout race error. Okay. Let's put this as transformation and these as timeout. Okay. I hope that works. Uh, let's try it. Run. So, it's gonna get here, do the choice. If this attributes error equals DW. Oh, I left a space there. Damn it. Oh, it's not running. It's not running. It's not running. Okay. Well, can I run it again? Yeah. I don't know why it stopped running. But anyway, if there is, clear the type and then try for suggestions. Oh, it's not running. What? Well, yeah, I was, I was trying to do that. I cleared it and then I did suggestion and it just sends me a property name. And even if I remove this whole thing, it shows me type and I put it and then it just shows type again. I'm out. But this is not... Something went wrong. Mm. Okay, here we go. When must be followed by the equal character. Attribute name DW associated with the element when. 
What? Maybe it's because I have this like this. I hope. Let's try that, see if that makes a difference. I'm so hungry. I think that was it. Let me get this ready. So query param, we said it was ERR equals DW. 8081 available. This is deployed. Okay. Okay. So if it's DW, there was an error. If it's any other thing, an error occurred. All right, we, this works. W, DW, an error occurred. Okay, this works, awesome. So if I put DW here on caps, we see that we received there was an error. Sweet, this is working, this is working. So even though the attributes here is sending me an error, it is working. So cool. That works. Um, and then I wonder if I can send this to Git really quick. Terminal, terminal. Or is that too much to ask? Because I would like to make this available for you to try. Um, I am a time, so you can you can leave if you want. Let me just try real quick. Git. Whoops. Here. Git in it. Okay, and then. Uh, GitHub, where's my repositories, um, new, let's put this as test one, two, three, ACV, or ACV, test one, two, three, public, um, Sure, add a readme, create. Okay. And then this is the HTTPS. Uh, where is the thing? It, uh, what, how was it? A remote, remote, like that. No. Git at no, it's gonna take me a while. Okay, never mind then. I might send this to my GitHub as ACV test one, two, three. So you can see this and then put it in your ACV if you want to try some things out to see whatever I was doing here. <laughs> all right, so that is all for this stream then. Remember to go into, oops, twitch.tv slash mulesoft underscore community so you follow us you see the schedule of the upcoming streams next stream is going to be on thursday same time with shivani what is shivani gonna be doing let me check um rpa either mulesoft rpa or mulesoft hyper automation so whatever she does it's gonna be awesome so remember to come 
And if you subscribe or like follow us or whatever, you will receive notifications as soon as this live starts. So you will join as soon as it starts. So you never miss anything that we're doing. And that's all for this stream then. Thank you so much for joining. I hope this was helpful. I hope you can see the value of doing any point gold builder. And again, this is a beta version, so it's not really done and it has a lot of flaws and some things are not as easier or better to do than studio, but it's because this is a beta version. They're constantly working on this and they will be sending new and new features on every release. So you will be able to see what are the new things. I'm going to be here doing the new things that they release so you can see what is happening and how this is evolving. And eventually we will get to a point where any point code builder has exactly the same and more functionality than studio does. So that's the dream. <laughs> we will get there eventually. Right now it's just a beta so you can try it out to see how it works, but it's not for you to work on any projects because it's going to give you headaches. And that's it. I hope you like this. Um, or you can also like try it out for small projects like the one that I just did because it can be like helpful or not, <laughs> whatever, however you want to see it. But this is a beta version. It's just for fun. It's not for actually working yet. All right. So I hope you had fun. I, I hope this was helpful and I will continue doing this as soon as new releases are done. I will see you then next Thursday. 20 at this time with Shivani doing hyper automation or RPA. All right. See you then next Thursday. Bye.